All right, welcome to part one of a two-part series on transformations. I love this stuff. I'm so excited right here. Let's get in there and check it out. So transformations, we're talking about sliding things, flipping things, stretching things. This first section, we're only going to worry about kind of sliding and reflecting. So uh, let's take a look. What are translations? That is the whole idea. We slide things up, down, left, or right. These are called additive transformations. We're going to add something to them and it makes them move horizontally or vertically. They're called rigid movements because they stay the same. So it's going to be congruent from the pre-image to the image. What does that look like? So hopefully I have some experience with this. Let's come down here. If I make this function uh, the g of x from the f of x plus 4, well here is this. I'm going to give you some weird looking shapes here and you're just going to move them around. So all you have to do is take, here's the f of x. I'm going to take him. And what does this plus 4 at the end do? It just moves him up. One, two, three, four. So he just slid right up, so that's a translation. It's a vertical translation of shifting it up four. Super cool. Uh, how about this? What if it's inside the parentheses? So this is now what causes the horizontal shift. Some people look and say, oh, it moves right four. Ah, it's always opposite of what you think horizontally. So this is actually a shift of left. So let's shift him left four. So he's going to go over one, two, three, four. So just so we have it, uh, the blue is the image, is what happens after you do the translation. So all we did here was a vertical shift up four. That just moved it up four. And then over here, we did a, a vertical shift of left four. So when it's inside, the key to this, this is going to get pretty crazy. Right now, it's pretty chill, and you've probably done a little bit with this. You know, when it's not outside of the f of x, it's, this is like your y values. This is like your function. You're just adding four. Sure, that moves it up. But what gets tricky is when we're inside the parentheses. This is what we're putting in for x. So it's actually changing horizontally what's happening. Awesome. Let's see if we can get, keep this going. Uh, sure thing. No problem here. So I'm looking at what is this then? Well, if the other one moved it up for, this is just going to move it down for. So just take that one, two, three, four. And there I am. I'm good to go. So you probably, because you have pencil and paper, can't really slide like I am. So a good habit is just to take all the kind of I call them major points, you know, all these interesting points. And just move the interesting points, what it says. So it's down four, so I took this point and moved it down four. Take this point, move it down four, down four. And then from there, connect your dots. So this just kind of helps you get a, a baseline of where you're headed because we're going to do multiple shifts. Again, so this one, we see it's minus four. It's always opposite of what you would think. So grab him and go over right one, two, three, four. Excellent. So we're going to be really big about the notation in this one and understanding what's happening um, and seeing all the different things that happen with these translations. So good. Okay, we are gonna do some reflections. So let's reflect on this. Let's go back at this. If I put a negative out in front, so I've got this negative in front, what does that do? That's gonna cause a vertical reflection. So I'm gonna take this bad boy over here. All right, flip him right over the X axis here. So check it out, check out these points. Two went to negative two. The things on the x-axis don't flip anywhere because they're already there. But this guy was up here at positive 3. He gets flipped over. Almost looks like we made a little fish there. That's pretty cool. It's just a reflection over the x-axis or a vertical reflection. So um, all we're really going to do in this one is vertical. So again, can we put it all together? So can you go through and label all the parts? Sure. What is this going to do? This is going to move it right to. So I know inside the parentheses is left or right. Outside the parentheses, this is going to move it up 5. And then we do have a vertical flip right here. So we've got this vertical reflection. So I'll put vertical right here. Awesome. So how do we go about doing this? We kind of need an order. And really, you're kind of safe in this one. Next section, it really matters. So we're going to start just like order operations in our parentheses. So we're going to start with our horizontal. So we're going to take him. Let's grab him. Move him right. One, two. So you may want to lightly draw this in when you're sketching it. Maybe just kind of a rough shape like that. Now I'm going to work outside the parentheses. I'm going to come over here to the vertical reflection. So let me flip this bad boy. So there he is flipped upside down. I just flipped the points over. Now what's the last thing I'm going to do? I'm going to add that plus 5. So I'm going to take these points. So you may have to draw that little light shape in there. And now move these up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Excellent. So when we do a bunch of transformations, I get it. It is kind of tricky to draw all those things. So maybe lightly sketch one. Move it. Lightly sketch another one. Erase if you have to. Um, but just show all those translations. So remember, we're going to start inside the parentheses first, then work your way out, um, just like order of operations. Awesome. So that was all looking at the graphs and fun and drawing pictures. Now let's get down to some algebra. Let's really see what's happening in here with these transformations. So if I give you a function, I'm going to create a new function. 
uh, from the f of x. I'm just going to add 4 to it. What does this do? Well, just take the f of x. This is pretty chill. So here is the f of x. It is x squared Okay, so I want to make this new function, the g of x, that is the f of x plus 4. So really, this is pretty chill. I'm just going to take the f of x. It is x squared minus 3x plus 2, and that is the f of x. So a lot of times, I'll put that in brackets. That lets me know where the f of x is. This is not a bad one. This one's pretty chill, but later on, it'll get pretty intense. And what I want to do to it, I want to add that 4 to it. So all I'm going to do is come out here and add that 4 to it, and then from here, it's just it's just a kind of a cleanup game. I'm just going to clean it up. These brackets don't really matter. You can distribute a 1 if you want, but you're really just saying, hey, this is going to be x squared minus 3x plus 2 plus 4 is the plus 6. So here's my new function. So we're going to create a new function from, the, uh, from an original f of x here. Awesome. What about when it's on the inside, though? So again, I want to make a g of x such that it is the f of x plus 4. So don't freak out. Whatever is in here goes in for x. So wherever you have an x up here, oh man, I have an x right to start. I'm going to replace it. Don't write x. Write x plus 4. And I'm going to square that bad boy. Minus 3 times x. But what is what am I plugging in there? I'm plugging in x plus 4. And then what do I have here at the end? Plus 2. So I rewrote the f of x. And I plugged in the whole x plus 4. Now it is a cleanup game. And this one, unfortunately, is a little worse you know, just remember, this is the, the mistake a lot of people make. This is x, you've got to actually FOIL this out or distribute it out. So we're really looking at x plus 4 times x plus 4. Um, let's go ahead and distribute this. So negative 3 goes to this, so it would be negative 3x minus 12 plus that 2 there at the end. So it's just a lot of cleanup in this one. This one, when I double distribute, I should get x times x is x squared uh, plus 8x in the middle plus 16 when you go 4 times 4, and my, and then we'll just write all this out, minus 3x minus, let's go ahead and just put minus 10. So I went ahead and kind of cleaned this up right here. Awesome. And then let's wrap it up, get some closure here, just combine some more like terms. So this is what the g of x is here. And then what is the finale for the g of x? Let's clean this up here. I've got an x squared. He's got nobody to combine. I can add these 8x's and these 3x's to get 5x. And then I can say 16 and 10 is going to combine to give me 6. Awesome. There it is right there. So basically, we're just going to kind of do the transformations and create a new function after the, trans after the translation in this case. Awesome. How about numerically? Now this gets fun. I feel like this is like a little game here. So I've got this table of the f of x. Here's the f of x. I want to create a new function that it's the f of x just added 2 to it. So all you have to do here, I want to find the g of 2. Plug and chug, baby. Put two in there for the, I want to find this new function. So you're going to take the f of two and add two to it. That's a lot of twos. So just whatever's in here, you're going to put in for your x. Now there's a reason I gave you a table. What is the f of two? Come down here and find the f of two. Two makes 10. So because two makes 10, I can plug 10 in here, add two to it, and that'll be my final answer here. So in my new function, the g of two, will equal 12. So I'm going to use the uh, f of x values to come up with my g of x. Rock and roll. How about, that was a nice vertical translation. Now I've got a horizontal and a vertical. So again, plug and chug, baby. I'm just plugging 4 in for x. So if I want to find the g of 4, and this is great notation work, we're going to say it's the f of 4 minus 2. And then we're going to add 1 to the end of the uh, whatever we get for the function, whatever comes out. So 4 minus 2 is just really, we're saying the f of 2. And I'm trying to show all the steps here because it is kind of weird. It's sometimes the first time you see this. The f of 2 is what? Well, 2 makes 0. So there's a lot of stuff on the table I don't even need. So that's just going to be 0 plus 1, which means my g of 4 is 1. Awesome. So I think of that as like a little game, a little puzzle. Try to decode it. The g of 4 is 1. Excellent. All right, here's where I think it gets the trickiest, is we have, you know, when we had the domain and range of an original function and I translate it, it creates a new domain and range. Like in the beginning when I shift it around, the domain and range also shift. So check it out. I've got a domain and range here of this, of a function. 
And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a new function when I do all of this to it. Holy cow. So now we got to really do some thinking here. What is actually happening? So let's start with the domain. I'm going to start with the domain over here. So my domain started at what? Negative four inclusive to three. So it's only in those values. And we got to really be thinking about what's happening. That's all my X values. So when I look at this function, the only thing affecting the X values are in the parentheses. This is where all your X's hang out. So what is happening to this? Well, you're shifting it. Remember which way, left or right? You're going to shift it left five. Because this will get tricky, especially in the part B of this uh, section. Uh, you're going to shift it left five. So if I shift that left five, it was at negative four. Where is it going to go? Shift it left five, it goes to negative nine. And where does that go? It goes to negative two. So in this case, you're actually subtracting five from both of them. This is my new domain right here. I'm going to circle that. This is the new domain. Woo! Awesome, of the g of x. Excellent. Can we do the same thing for range? Sure. So let's take a look at our original range. There's range is what, 3, 9? And we're not including them. So really those including, not including, don't matter to me. Just keep them consistent. So what is happening to the y's? Well, first, work our way out. This is happening. We've got this vertical reflection. So we've got a vertical reflection. Sorry, my handwriting is a little rough. <laughs> vertical reflection. So what is that going to do? Well, it flips it over the x-axis. So think about a vertical re reflection. Remember, these are all y values. Don't freak out. This is not x comma y. Domain was all x values. This is all y values. So if you flip the y value of 3 over, it turns into negative 3. If you flip the 9 over, it turns into negative 9. I'm just reflexing them. And it kind of makes sense. I took these y values and I, I negated them. I made them all negative. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to shift it up. So we've got this shift up. And if you've got to write it out, write it out. Because it is weird. Uh, you're going to say shift up to. That's this part right here. So I reflected it. I'm going to shift it up to. So if I take a y value of negative 3 and I shift it up, I'm now at negative 1. If you take negative 9, shift it up, you're at negative 7. Or you're adding 2 to all of them. Okay, great. So now notice here, we're not quite done yet. It looks pretty good. But notice when we reflected it, it kind of changed who was smaller here. So we should wrap things up by saying, okay, really... The lowest it can be is negative 7 to negative 1. So we should flip that order uh, so it goes from least to greatest. This would be the final answer. So if you can kind of visualize what's happening, it really helps out. And I kind of jot little notes as I go. Just make sure range, you're only talking about the Ys. For domain, you're only talking about the X. All right, good luck on the match check. Peace out.